I'm not sure, I haven't read the description, but I believe it was made for a chapter of a motorcycle gang. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> No, I didn't expect you to expect you to say that, but now you have said it, 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 it seems to make perfect sense. Um, yeah, I don't think that's true about the motorcycle game. Oh, <laughs> well, I believed it. I believed it, and now I'm slightly disappointed that it's not made for a motorcycle gang. Are you, are you saying that uh, in order to celebrate these pictures that were at once point deemed fake that are have now been with modern techniques determined to be uh, very much genuine that Jeje de has celebrated those by producing small forgeries. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All that said, I wonder if you are so enamoured by the watch, you want to buy it, but you're not so thrilled about the thought of going up in the vomit comet. Oh, how does that sorry, work? Sorry, sir. Your credit card's being declined. <laughs> no watch for you. You have to collect it from the plane. Yeah, right. It's right at the back. It's mandatory. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to take off when I go in there and get it, are you? No, 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 no. Shut the door. I like it. I mean, maybe it's something, maybe it's Zenith trying to tell the, the watch buying public, if you want to dive watch, you got to dive. You know, this isn't just... <laughs> go and get it. It's not just for filthy casuals. If you want, if it, you want a space watch, you better get up there, son. Is it like um, when, when you did in school, when you did your, like, swimming... Uh, lessons and they put that rubber brick at the bottom of the swimming pool right. but like it's the watch and you have to swim down and go and get it yeah 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 I like that yeah good for good for 300 meters yeah well let's see let's see if you're good for 300 meters so, buy a g-shock and do a bungee jump is that, is that, is that the vibe and so the result is this um new harmonious chime which is considerably louder and clearer and brighter than uh, what we've heard previously well let's let's rewind to uh explain why this is even necessary or oh, can i try and go for some more points for trying <laughs> i think you've maxed out on points for trying was it to entertain our boys in the trenches with some some nice little chimes <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'll just have a little ditty do to them that'd be nice wouldn't it so Back in the day, before people had play your watch again, Charlie. <laughs> I think where my where my interest in it starts to wane is case diameter forty three millimeters. That's a bit hefty, isn't it? Yeah, you're definitely going to be able to read the time, regardless of the fact that the hours aren't marked on it and there are holes in the dial. At forty three millimeters, you and the guy, the other end of the bus, is definitely going to be able to re read the time from that. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think whoever's going to be buying this watch is going to be riding the bus, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you, before I um, give you my lunch that I ate earlier, why don't you tell me a little bit more about it? I, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Okay, oh, all right, let me, let me read the blurb. Um Discussions over the ideal kingship have evolved throughout the years, mm -hmm. and the limited edition Swan and Edgar hand-assembled Longshanks Crusader Automatic Rose Men's Watch yeah. considers King Edward I, right. whose imposing figure earned him the Longshanks nickname, okay. and who personified the quintessential idea of a monarch and soldier yeah. during a period where England was regularly engaged in conflicts mm -hmm. with neighbouring kingdoms. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, are you going to tell me anything about the watch? Um, well, yeah, so <clears throat> it's like pretty big, King Edward. You might see a, uh, a Chopard LUC and think, oh, that's cool, that's Patek Philippe quality for not even Rolex money these days, buy it, and then realise when you have to send it away for a service, it could cost you thousands um, because it's, it's a very niche product. Or you could buy one of those Chopard sport watches with the little diamonds floating around in the dial thinking it's one of those old bubble jet water games um and then realize that it's not it's just a watch yeah you spend spent ages trying to get them all on the little shelves but there are no shelves yeah exactly yeah very disappointing that would be and then you'll double down with the fact that you go i can't sell this watch to buy the watch i do want because this one is a I'll be making a financial mistake. I'll be kicking myself for losing money years down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you end up in a, in a lose-lose situation where you've got a product you don't actually want. I, I know where you're coming from there. I've got the um, version 1 Nintendo Switch with the uh, red Joy-Cons that was bundled with Super Mario Odyssey. Right. But I'd like to upgrade to the new Switch OLED version for the greater screen real estate and OLED technology. But the thing is, I feel like the Odyssey bundle is now discontinued, so that's worth more. And I kind of I don't want to part with it because I'm worried it might become extremely valuable rare and collectible but it's sort of inferior to the current model that's out there so i know where you're coming from there with with your rolex um watches <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah well i think you're on the right lines um <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to go and take the boat out for a spot of fishing you've got your tide level indicator wow yeah that's actually good but hang on wouldn't that need to be localized? Sorry, what? Uh, your tide level indica uh, indicator, wouldn't that need to be a localized thing? Um, Did I say it does sidereal as well? There was, you, there was so much- Six barrels, Tom, six barrels. So much there that I didn't even understand half the words you were saying. Um, more barrels than a pub. More barrels than a pirate's shed. <laughs> Come back to that. I'll come back to that. Why not have a watch that looks like a jukebox? Uh, excuse me? Yeah, so do you like America? <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? They, uh, I think they, if I recall, they won all the wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, made all the things and are the best at everything. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is the Harry Ramsden <laughs> Opus 14. Um <laughs> Um, do, do you care to adjust that for the for the viewers who may not know that you're joking? What did I say? Harry Ramsden. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Harry Winston, Opus 14. At 12 o'clock, the trail of love appears in red to indicate the 45-hour power reserve. A trail of love? Yeah, you can see the trail of love there. It's like um, these little airborne spores. Oh. Blood red and deadly. A trail of love sprayed across the dial. Yeah, but um, that's the 45-hour power reserve indicator. <laughs> yeah, there's, no, there's nothing like uh, the, your, your demising time to remind you of love, is there? You've not got long left. Better find a partner. So it has the grand and petit sonnery, which means it will tell you when the hours pass and when the quarters pass, which you might remember from your Casio, which you can't hear anymore. In fact, a note on that. Tom isn't dead. Thank you very, very much for all the people who thought that because Tom could no longer hear the chime of his Casio that he had passed away. Uh, he is very much alive and well, but just deaf in the high registers, apparently. Yeah, I'd just like to clean that up as well. I, it's, I, it's not because I'm old either. I can't hear high registers because of all my many years spent in a sludge metal band because I'm hardcore. <laughs> just just want to just want to clear that up. It's not because I'm old. I think the age thing's a grey area at this point. Probably a bit of both. You might remember we actually had a James Ward Packard um, Vacheron pocket watch. I see a lot of pocket watches in my time. <laughs> I can't, you can't be expected to remember them all. It's the one that you nearly dropped. Oh, yeah. Oof. You know, I, when sometimes I'm reminded of this, uh, there was this news story of a couple of lads, um, moving men, um, moving like a, I think it was a, a Steinway or something, um, a grand piano for a concert and they dropped it and destroyed it and it was on the news. And I just thought, wow, could you imagine having such a bad day at work that it made the news? <laughs> and uh, I often think about that when handling very rare and expensive pieces, just like, please don't make the news. Is that a thought that almost dropping the James Ward Packard Vacheron, does that come come to you just as you're about to fall asleep yeah 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 yeah. or or at, while i am asleep i'll um i'll just bolt upright and go pack hard the starry firmament she is a map for sailors <laughs> a playground for lovers and the primordial calendar of all civilizations don't lie to me tom it doesn't say that it does oh it does oh that's terrible why does it say that, Tom? That's it, though. They don't say it. it then it goes into explaining how the watch works in a very clear and concise fashion. Well, the scientific representation of considerable oneric potential will serve the cause of great leaders in search of the ultimate watch, but also that of sailors. Um, I don't know if that helps. <laughs> great leaders and sailors. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see Nardana nautical themed, aren't they? So they've always got to have God. a little bit little bit of something for the sailors. Yeah, a watch from everyone from Vladimir Putin to Captain Birdseye. <laughs> I give you the RM69. 
Now you, you make you make titter inaudibly at the number sixty nine, <laughs> <laughs> but there is a very real reason why they've picked this, and uh, the reason why I'm showing this watch to you. Well, there's two reasons why I'm showing this watch to you. The the first is, have you seen it? Wait, this is a luxury Swiss mechanical packet of love hearts. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This says this says two things about the human race. I think one. The fact that this watch exists and that someone has gone to the effort to make a mechanical mechanism that when you press the button, all three of those things spin round and it it creates a a unique phrase that could be inciting to any particular activity you may be up to. Although I'm sure it's not particularly romantic to be like, let's see what my watch says. The fact that that exists, I love that exploration. Again, the, the pursuit of human imagination in all directions, I love it. It's like a safe space for experimentation where you go like, no one's going to tell you off for making something stupid. Just make it and let's see what happens. I like that. On the other hand, when something like this exists and costs so much money, it makes you think we're all doomed. Too expensive to buy, too dumb to die. (laughs) From fun and exciting and unique watches to Daniel Wellington. (laughs) No, I think you've misunderstood. You're trying to persuade me. This is a bad start or Denial Wellington, as I like to call him, because he's living in a dream world. (laughs) Dream world, DW, yeah. Don't wear. (laughs) Although the the DW on the logo is round the wrong way. Um, I'm not sure if that's an homage to his origin story. I think his business started out as a lemonade stand and he used to (laughs) put the letters round the wrong way. (laughs) A lemonade stand? Please, mister, will you buy my watch? Actually, um, the origin story of Daniel Wellington is is quite compelling. It's almost as good as uh, Bremont's. <laughs> Do tell. So, Philip Tysander is a Swedish gentleman, entrepreneur, and he met an intriguing British gentleman while travelling the world called Daniel Wellington. <laughs> Uh, did he did he meet him mid hot air balloon flight or while he was walking his duck? He seems like a very uh, distinguished gentleman so far. Yeah, well, Philippe was in a canoe and uh, Daniel Wellington was running away from a boulder that was chasing him out of a tomb. <laughs> True story. There is a distinct difference between seconds and moments. Focus, focus on the essential, experiencing time consciously recognising its value and the ultimate desire to capture fleeting moments forever, to give them shape, character and a heartbeat. 